Welcome to Unfold Data Science friends. My name is Aman and I am a data scientist. In this video, I am going to explain you how DB scan clustering works. I am going to explain you these five important concepts around DB scan clustering which will make you remember this algorithm very easily and tomorrow you can explain to someone in the interview with confidence about how DB scan clustering works. Okay. First of all guys, why DB scan clustering is a famous or well-known clustering algorithm? Before that, we need to know what are the some of the disadvantages of the famous K-means algorithm. Okay, so if I have to tell you what are some of the disadvantages of K-means clustering, then number one disadvantage is how do you decide optimal number of K in advance, right? So in K-means clustering, we need to know how many clusters we want in advance which is not always an easy job. There are ways to do elbow method, you know, subject matter expert help, but it's not always an easy job. Point number one. And point number two is K-means clustering is very sensitive to noise and outliers. The reason for that is in K-means clustering, it will try to include all the data points in one or other cluster by calculating the distance. Okay. And there the problem comes if one point lies too far from rest of the observations. So K-means is very sensitive to noise or outliers. I had created detailed video on K-means. You can go and watch link is here guys. But how DB scan clustering works and how it takes care of these two problems. So DB scan clustering stands for density based spatial clustering of application with noise. Okay. So this is a density based clustering application. What is density guys? Density is nothing but in a given area, how many data points are present. If there are more data points, we call it more dense area. If less data point, we call it less dense area. Okay. So when we talk of density, what we are talking here is closeness of points, right? So if this is my X, Y plane, then how closely the points are. So this might be a high density point. This might be a low density point. So here one important thing is how do you define closeness? Are you calling these two points as close or are you calling this point and this point also as close? Then only you define density, right? So to define the closeness, the important criteria is known as epsilon standing for EPS. So when you call this algorithm in Python, you need to pass this parameter EPS. Okay. So EPS is basically a number or epsilon is it's a number. So for example, if I say this number is equal to one, then what will happen is consider this one as the Euclidean distance. Okay. All the points, which is distance, let us consider this point as the center and draw a circle with radius of one. Okay. Put the radius as one. All the points which are inside this circle will be defined as close to this point. That is point number one. Point number two is what is minimum number of samples? This is an another parameter that you need to pass when you call this algorithm. If you call this as three, right? What will happen is let us say in this circle, there are one, two, three, and including this point, four points. Okay. So if at least, at least three points are there in this circle, then the point that we are considering here will be called as a core point, will be called as a core point. And core point is the basic of how DB scan clustering works. Let us say you submit 1000 data points to the algorithm. The first thing algorithm does is it tries to find out which are the core points or where is my first core point. How the core point is defined guys? A core point is a point where if you draw a circle with radius is equal to epsilon, then the rest of the points inside that circle, the count of that, including that core point also should be greater than or equals to minimum number of sample. This is the definition of your core point. Okay. The next term is what is a border point? A border point is a point which is not a core point. Okay. 
which is not a core point but if you draw a circle from a border point for example let us i am saying this is a border point just for demonstration i am saying from this border point if you draw a circle of radius 1 if you draw a circle of radius 1 so its circle will that will be center actually i should not draw like this this should be center and there should be a circle like this okay one radius inside this radius if there is one core point then that becomes this point becomes a border point what is a border point guys again border point is not a core point border point is a point where if i draw a circle of radius epsilon then at least one core point comes in that circle that is the definition of border point okay and what is the noise point all the points which is neither core nor border are noise points so by now you would have understood that noise points will always be far for example if some point is here or here or here there is a high possibility that these points might not be a core point because density around these will be less okay if it's not a core point then the possibility of it being a border point will arise only when it has a core point near to it okay and if that also does not happen that means it's a noise so you know what we are trying to do here is we are trying to see where is the high density of points okay what we are trying to do is we are trying to see which area we have high density of points those areas we will have many core points for example this is work one core point we started with then we see the neighboring points from these neighboring points we see if this is also a candidate for core point this can also be a core point we will see if this data set this point is also a candidate for core point this can also be a core point there can be many core points and all these core points which are relating to one another like this for example for this core point this is a neighboring point for this core point this is a neighboring point all these will be called as one circle okay one cluster if you understood all these concepts right what is a core point what is a noise point and what is a border point then i am going to tell you how this clustering algorithm works let's say let's say you take 10000 data points and submit to db scan the first thing that will happen is it will try to find one core point at random okay so if this is my data this is my data there are many points in the data for example like this some points here some points here some points here first thing it will do is it will try to figure out where is my first core point let us say this is the first core point okay this is the first core point then this becomes the circle of this core point and these are the you know one this, this will be called as the one cluster now this cluster will expand it will try to include more points inside this cluster how it will do it will check if this is also a candidate for the core point yes or no if yes all the points where this becomes a core point will be part of the same cluster it will again check this point is this a candidate for core point if it satisfies all the points which comes in one radius or epsilon radius will come under this cluster similarly all the points will be checked one after another and it will see how long i can expand my cluster first cluster and at the moment it sees the border points and it sees there are no core points beyond this it will stop there and it will search for another core point at random let us say this core point and same thing will repeat here iteratively it will see all the points whether it is a core point or border point or noise point if it's a core point or border point it will be part of one or other cluster if it's a noise point it will not be associated to any cluster okay so how we are taking care of these two things guys we are not giving the value of k in advance we do not know how many clusters will be there we don't want to give that we just say to algorithm hey minimum sample is three and epsilon is one now you go and find out how many clusters are there and second thing is if there are noise in the data that will come inside the noise point and it will not be considered in any of the cluster so this is how iteratively 
all the points will be categorized in one of these three buckets and clusters will be formed. Now comes the question, in what kind of scenarios this algorithm will do good and in what kind of scenarios it will not do good, okay? So first scenario where it will do good is if you have similar density in your data. For example, let us say here there is some kind of high density and here also there is similar kind of high density. Here there is similar kind of high density. In this type of scenarios, DB clustering will do good. Why? Because iteratively it will include all this in one cluster, all this in other cluster and all this in other cluster. When it will not do good is if there are varying densities in your data. What is the meaning of varying densities? Varying densities means some, some areas the density is really high. Okay. And some areas the density is low. What will happen is the cluster will confuse. Okay. So here it will find a core point. It will find a border point. It will try to see what is my next core. This minimum number of sample parameter will come. It will not let any other core point to be defined as core point. Many things can happen here. So if there are varying densities, then this might not do good. Second condition, if there are many dimensions in your data, right? For example, there are many features, many dimensions in your data. In that case, finding a good density or density based clustering becomes a little tricky. That is where it might not perform that great. Okay. It will do good if you have a, you know, uniform kind of density in your data like the diagram I, I drew here, right? And in some cases, you will see that it is doing far more better than k-means clustering, right? So this is all about db scan clustering guys, density based analysis. If you have any doubts, write me in comment. If you like the video, press the like button and kindly press the subscribe button and the bell icon if you have not done yet. I'll see you all in the next video guys. Till then, wherever you are, stay safe and take care.